The subject I'm, um, I'm going to use to paint on this wallet is, um, is Han Solo from Star Wars. Um, now this is a black and white image um, that I'm going to initially use because I'm going to do it, the, the initial painting in black and white. Then I'm going to add colour and uh, we're going to get something close to this. I'm going to be using Angela's paints throughout and I'll be showing you the... Um, I won't be, I'm, not, I'm not going to go through exact drop by drop proportions for skin tones etc. But I just want to show you how I do a, a colour portrait using this, this paint. Um, this is just an inkjet sheet that I'm going to be using to cut out my basic stencil for the basic layout that I'm going to airbrush. This whole portrait is going to involve um, paintbrush and airbrush technique um, intermittently. So we're going to, I'm going to be using uh, airbrush, then paintbrush, then airbrush, then paintbrush to um, to get as much detail as I, as I can really on such a, a, a small surface. Um, this is my preferred method. So um, hopefully you'll find it um, informative. Before you uh, apply Angelus uh, acrylic paints to any leather, you do need to uh, prepare the surface. Now that requires removing the, uh, any surface sheen, um, any grime or anything like that. Now this is, this is a new wallet, but it still does require a little bit of preparation. This is the, what the leather was like prior to, uh, prior to cleaning it, so it's got a, quite a shiny surface. Now this is going to hinder any um, paint adhesion, so you do want to remove this. And as you can see, this is the surface that I've prepared ready for the paint. Now this has got a very dull finish to it, which is exactly what you want. Now I've done that with um, the Angelus um, leather preparer and deglazer. Um, now what you do is you just simply put some on a bit of kitchen towel and you wipe the surface and you'll gradually see that the surface shine will come off and you'll probably get some dark dye coming off on the on the towel as well which is which is good. Um, once you've got yourself a nice even dull uh, surface then you, you're basically ready to uh, ready to paint. So this is the, um, I, I stick with this because I'm using Angela's products um, throughout this wallet and I really do want to use the, 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 their, um, their product from, from start to finish so I would highly recommend this to, uh, to clean the surface prior to any paint work. With the um, inkjet print I've done I've used a scalpel and I've started to cut out the uh, some of the key areas of the face. I'm not after a lot of detail here, I'm just after um, reference areas so that I can then freehand the rest of it. So this is purely to map out the image on the, on the leather wallet. So you can see I've cut out a couple of bits of his hair. Um, I always cut out the whites of the eyes, uh, lips etc. As I progress I'll be cutting more and more and more out of this until there's very little left really but all I'm going to get is a very basic stenciled idea of the face on the on the wallet and then from there on it's I'll discard the stencils completely it's all brush and airbrush after that. Now as you know I'm using the Angelus um, leather paints for this project um, now when I'm using it with the airbrush what I'm going to do is I'm going to use their um, their reducer which is called Too Thin um, and we're going to use it, and initially I'm going to use it 50-50, one part of this to one part of the paint. What I like to do is, is get some of these little bottles and pre-mix it. It saves me putting a drop here and a drop there into the paint cup with the airbrush, so it's, it's all ready to go really. Um, I might be reducing it um, a little bit more or a little bit less as we go along using some of the paint. Uh, depends how thick I want it, uh, but this is just to really, uh, um, just, to, just to show you how I sort of uh, use the airbrush and the brush on a, on a portrait using, uh, using Angela's paints. Okay so this is the initial stages of the, uh, the layout of the face um, obviously very basic at this stage I've basically just laid the uh, cutout on and this is as far as I've got so I'm going to continue cutting out this face bit by bit and we'll build up the initial uh, map out of the face um, so, so far this is airbrushed, uh, one part paint, one part to thin, um, both Angelus uh, acrylics. And um, I'll get back to you when I've, uh, when I've probably completed the stencil section. Okay, so the next stage with the airbrushing. Again, I'm using a very low pressure, probably 5 psi. Every time I come back to this with another little bit cut out, I'm making sure I line everything up as close as I can. 
and then just dusting the paint on going on very thin not going on heavy dusting it on the harder you go on with the paint at this stage the more difficult it will be to to cover it up with the brushwork in the future let's just uh, turn the pressure up slightly Okay. A little bit more done. Okay, so there you have the initial um, laying out of the portrait. This is um, it's just white, obviously, um, and with the cutout stencil. Um, now this is this is the white mixed one to one with the um, Angelus uh, too thin uh, medium. Um, now I'm going to come in with a with a brush and start to fill in the areas. This is where it looks a little bit scruffy to begin with but it's it, it does level out when I then I start to introduce the airbrush again then the brush then the airbrush. It's an ongoing process but the result is um, um, it, it is pretty good. Um, so for now I'm gonna actually be using the brush. I'm also when, I, when I'm I'm actually doing this I'm gonna be using the the, the paint with the same reduction with the too thin as well um, with the brushwork initially so it's, it's it's thin paint but it's 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 not loaded on the brush very much at all um, and I'll explain that in a minute the type of brush I like to use is just a soft nylon brush now these are cheap brushes um, I use a cheap brush mainly because they don't seem to last very long um, now Angela's paints go on really well with a nice soft brush um, so this is the kind of brush, this is a number two, um, I'll go to a number one if I'm looking for extreme detail like in um, eyebrows, eyelashes etc I'll go to a maybe a zero or something like that but but this is a good all-rounder really uh, this is for my dry brush technique and for applying the paint so I'll, I'll, I'll explain that in a little bit but these are, I do use like to use um, synthetic brushes um, usually so what I've done is I've dipped the brush into the uh, one to one uh, paint with the too thin um, medium and then I've wiped the brush off on some inkjet paper and I've basically removed most of the paint on the brush. I do not want the brush, the, the paint rather, to, to bead up on the surface or anything. I'm paying attention to my reference image now and again and basically just stroking this paint on I'm building it up very very slowly I'm going over the whole face just like this there's hardly any paint going on if, I, if you apply too much paint with the brush it's going to be almost impossible to balance it out with the airbrush work after so you want to go in nice and light this process is, isn't a fast process because we're trying to balance the brush work and the airbrush work at the same time so going too heavy with the brush you've killed it there's hardly any paint on this brush but there's enough for me to just keep going I'm basically just dabbing the paint on as I go along paying attention to my reference image all this at the moment is just an underpainting for the successive layers after so it's very very thin paint and I'm just going to carry on over the whole face until it's a little bit more detailed in areas and then we'll go in with the, with the airbrush. Now when I say about um, removing most of the paint on the brush 
I'm just dipping it in the white here as you can see I'm going to get rid of the excess but I'm also going over to some inkjet paper that I've taped on my palette here and I'm going to get rid of most of that. Now there's enough in that brush now to do what you just saw if I simply dipped it in here and started to paint we're going to get a giant blob of paint and that will sink into the leather and I won't be able to hide it so get rid of the excess paint dab it on your inkjet paper and they're ready, you're ready then to dab away at the, uh, at the leather itself and I just keep doing that until the portrait's um, basically done with, at this stage okay so this is the brush stage complete um, you know it doesn't, it doesn't look fantastic by any stretch of the imagination but next what I'm going to do is um, I, will, I will round out the features with the airbrush and the white paint give it everything a little bit more body um, and then after that it's it's a bit of brushwork with some black to give the the dark shadows and then it's um, blend that uh, the shadow work out with the airbrush again so it's starting to come together but as I said it, this isn't a fast process you know you've got to be patient if you want to want the results at the end of the day okay with the uh, with the brushwork complete for the initial stage I'm going to start to fill the face out now with the, with the with the airbrush and some white just give this a little bit more body so I'm just gently dusting over I'm not trying to I'm not trying to get rid of the um, the brush marks at this stage they will eventually disappear as I um, as I go over this with other layers it will eventually disappear the brush brush marks but I'm not trying to just bury them straight away you do need to be a little bit experienced with the airbrush if you can do something this small um, because it is all about airbrush control now that we're basically freehanding it when I mean, admittedly I'm going to be getting most of the details um, with the brush I mean the hair and stuff like that is going to be is going to be brushed but you do you do kind of still need to be relatively proficient with um, with the airbrush this airbrush by the way is a Badger Sotar 2020. Um, really like this brush. It's uh, it's built for detail, and uh, it's perfect for this kind of thing. Um, does lend itself very well to to painting wallets or anything else small actually. So I'm just gonna. probably between 5 and 10 psi at the moment paints very thin starting to build up more of a sort of a 3d ish image really laying the paint on thin When it's this thin, it doesn't really matter if you've if you have thinned your paint with water. There's no chance of this cracking. It's just it is way too thin at the moment, and even at the end, it's still going to be thin. Try not to lose any of the features. I don't I'm, I don't really want to get rid of any of the features that I've I've mapped out for my initial stencil work. Periodically you want to get rid of any dried paint on the needle. You'll know when that's happening because you'll you'll get intermittent um, paint flow and that it does mean that you've probably got some tip dry on your needle. So just keep that in mind all the time. Don't keep going if it's, there's nothing coming out because you might end up with a big splat on your on your work. So just um, just the paint on 
following the roundness of the of the cheeks what you don't want to do is start scribbling because those it will show up so we're trying to follow the contours of the face and it will slowly start to come together so I'll get back to you in a minute when this um, when this part's complete okay so that's the airbrush work um, finished on this in this stage you can see I've kind of filled out filled out the face given it a little bit more um, uh, of a rounded look with the airbrush the airbrush is the only tool really that you can get this kind of great really nice fade into your work which is why I use the airbrush um, and it's it's starting to cover up the, the um, the brush strokes that I added in the previous stage. So uh, now I'm going to uh, hit the hit the shadows with some black, and that'll be with a brush. And then um, and then I'll sort of blend them out with with uh, with the airbrush. And then it uh, that might be the stage that I start adding some colour to this. Okay, hopefully I'll, I want to show you a technique that I use, whereas whereby I I've thinned this paint by the way. This is black mixed mixed with the uh, too thin. Uh, medium one to one again. Again, I've palleted most of the paint off the brush onto a bit of inkjet paper. What I do is, instead of using, I don't use Friskit film. I don't use any stencils after this stage now. Um, but so I can get a nice hard edge, what I'll do is, I'm, I've normally got this is a just a dry paintbrush here. I'll hold this in my mouth, and then I'm going to apply some paint around the edge of the ear, and then what I'm going to do is take the one out of my mouth and f which is a dry brush and fan out the wet edge I should have a sharp edge and then a nice blended edge and I'm, this is how I create my um, hard edges and my soft edges and then combine that with the airbrush work so with the dry brush basically just just very light dabs what I've done is I've created on the left I've created the sharp edge against the ear on the right I've faded that shadow out and that's how I use my uh, what I I'm, guess I'm calling it a dry brush technique to get the um, the balance of the blend and the sharp edge just using the paintbrush and that combined with the airbrush throughout the whole process um, just balance everything out Okay, so I've done the uh, black uh, with the brush, kind of chiselled out the, the, the darkest areas. Um, and what I'm going to do now is it's time to introduce colour into this portrait now. I think I've got I've done the underpainting. You've got your light and your shadow. Um, it's nice to have a white background to lay the colours on top because the colours. If you if you try and lay the colours on top of, if just, for instance, if I tried to um, put the colours on top of just the black wallet and just start start with colour you're not going to get the colours coming out um, very vibrantly at all because you're laying it onto a black background so you do need to you need to come up with a kind of a um, you need to divorce the background the dark background with some white and then you can lay your colours on top of that and the, the colours will come out a lot better then um, so this is basically the black and white underpainting and now it's time for colour so I'm going to go in with some um, with various colours on there to create the flesh tones and I'll, I'll take you through the colours I'm using. Right, I've actually uh, completed the the black with the paintbrush, um, added in the, most of the dark details, um, added a bit more structure to the hair, and generally picked out sort of the, the, the darkest shadows to make this uh, a little bit more more um, realistic. Um, what I've also done is I've just jumped back in again with the white. I've what I've done is I've I've put the highlight on the on the bridge of the nose just around the eyes I've just punched the whites out a little bit to be honest not really any need to do that because I'm going to go over it with some color but I just like to I just like to get kind of as close as I can at each stage um, so that's what I've done now I'm just going to go in now with some black with the airbrush just to round out some of the shadows and then it's time for color okay that's the uh, that's the black um, airbrushed on. I've just faded out some shadows, etc. I mean, 
I, I personally couldn't do it, couldn't complete these portraits without using both brush and airbrush. You can see the the shadow I've got here, which goes underneath this wave of hair here. It, it just gives the effect, uh, the illusion of it lifting away from the from the brow. So you do need an airbrush really to give you these really nice subtle shadows, etc. So this is as far as I'm going to go now with the with the black and white under painting. Uh, now it's time for colour. So um, it'll be pretty much the same. It'll be brush, then airbrush, brush, airbrush, etc. Until we're until we're done. One of the good colours I found for a, a base for a flesh tone is the um, Angelus Georgia Peach. Um, it's um, it's it's not as pink, if you know what I mean. As the Angelus Pink, um, it's got a little bit of an orange tone to it, which which kind of lends itself more to sort of a a nice. Um, sort of a tanned tanned skin tone so I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with this first and then to add my darker values I'll be adding either and just dark brown or the and just light brown to it to, to give me my uh, my shadow color tones because I'm not a photo realist I'm not going to add three and a half drops of this and 2.5 drops of that I'm just going to go with it and we'll just we'll get what we get at the end of it but I'll be I'll be happy with it um, you know I'm, I'm not after an exact uh, exact copy of the colour I'm just uh, I work a bit freer than that okay now as before I'm mixing the paint um, in equal measures with the uh, with the too thin um, medium and as before with the brush I am just dabbing there's hardly any paint on this brush. I've, I've got the excess off on the on the paper, and I'm just um, dabbing away, very light layers. I mean, it still looks a bit mottled because you you can still see the brush strokes. You might think that a lot of this is a waste of time because you're covering up what you've done before, or you're creating new brush strokes on the top of what you've just removed. But it all, you know, it all comes together at the end. Just have a little bit of patience with all this. Well, now I've sort of basically sketched out the image. Really, um, I've got in pretty light with every layer, um, with with thinned out paints. I think it's time to add a little bit more guts to the whole thing. Um, plus the fact that the 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 leather is now kind of sealed, if you know what I mean. It's it's had uh, quite a few layers on it, and it's not as absorbent as it was initially. So, it's time to make the paint a little bit thicker. And what I'm going to do is this time I'm going to mix the paint. Uh, when I need it to, uh, really blendable I'm going to mix it with a neutral which is basically a clear Angelus paint it's relatively um, it's the same thickness as the ordinary paint but it just makes it more transparent so uh, we're going to do away with the uh, with the too thin uh, medium uh, with the brush anyway I'll still use it with the airbrush and um, now it's it's time to add a little bit more color and body to the whole portrait so I'm putting the uh, the neutral, just a little bit of neutral onto my palette. Then we've got the peach, the Georgia peach, just a couple of drops onto the palette there. You don't use much paint when you're doing something this small. And what I do is I actually, I just mix it kind of 50-50ish until I get a nice transparent colour and then palette it again on the on the inject paper so that we don't get too much on there and then away we go again okay it's kind of hard to see at this point but um, on, on the camera but I have actually started to build up the flesh tone um, this is with the Georgia peach um, I've laid down a foundation um, very light foundation and what I can do now is I can um, start filling it in with the airbrush as I did with the uh, the white at the earlier stages and, um, and then I could start coming with some slightly darker colours to bring out the shadows, etc. Um, it always looks a bit weird at this point because um, there is some colour in the lips, slightly pinkish, magenta -y sort of colour in the lips. Until you put that in, you doesn't start to bring the whole face together really. It still looks a, bit, a little bit odd. So um, at some point I'm going to add the, that lip colour in so that I can see sort of where I'm going with the rest of the colours. But um, yeah, I'm really pleased with the way it's going at the moment. So in the next stage is... Um, some airbrush work just to 
pad out the rest of the, um, the brushwork I've just done. Okay, I've added some um, some light brown to the to the peach, and I've just started to airbrush in uh, some of the darker darker values. Um, what you tend to do at this stage, you tend to lose some of the highlights you put in previously, and it tends to look a little bit start to look a little bit flatter again. But uh, you do bring those highlights back out, and everything comes together. So now I'm going to perhaps go in with some. His, his, the skin tone is quite orange, to be honest, in the um, in the reference photo. So I'm going to um, introduce a little bit of orange into this, and then it'll be back and forth with uh, some dark browns, etc. You can see that I put some a little bit of magenta and red. Uh, mixed with the neutral on the lips just to put a little bit of colour into the lips to balance the face out um, but I'm just gonna um, as we go along now I'm just gonna add some some light brown possibly some dark brown and uh, we'll just take it from there. I start to darken some of the areas up with the with the light brown um, now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna reintroduce those highlights just to punch the face out and then I'll give me a direction where to go with the rest of the uh, rest of the detail so I think it's going to be a mixture of uh, brush um, and airbrush now, um, mainly the brush now for, for, the, for the slightly tighter details. Once I finish the face, I'll then move on to the to the hair, possibly. Um, it's just nice to get the face sorted out before I move on to anything else. Okay, what I'm doing here is I'm adding some of the highlights just to bring the face back to, back to life, really. Some of these highlights will get covered up again, but. I'm just very carefully just adding it. This is reduced a little bit with the uh, with the neutral. Subtlety is the key on all of this. Um, the more attention to pay you pay to the each little area. It will pay off in the long run. See, I'm hardly, I'm hardly touching the surface really. Get my dry brush if I need to blend any of the edges out. Just keep working my way along. Is why you don't want too much paint on your brush. Any blobs are going to be really difficult to cover up, um, and they'll just jump out at you as well. They'll be too, they'll be too stark against everything else. Good thing about working slowly is that if you do make a little bit of mistake, well, you don't really make mistakes because it's so easy to rectify. You're never going too hard and too fast to make a big error. You don't need to worry too much about that. Now the rest of these areas where I want to blend this out a little bit more, I, I, I would do that with the airbrush. But these are the these are the, the highlights, the real bright highlights. Okay, I don't want to keep going backwards and forwards on every single little step that I do, but you can see what a difference it has made when I've, I've, I've brought the highlights back out. It's given the, the face um, a more of a three-dimensional uh, look, and now what I can do is I can I can go back in um, with little uh, re-establish the, the, the shadows and um, come in with a little bit more detail with the brush. Then, of course, um, at the end as well, we, we, we add a few more little highlights, the ones that have been hidden with the subsequent layers, I've managed to um, I've introduced a little bit more white into the eye just to bring that to life again. So these are, it's, a, it's a back and forth process to be honest with the whole thing, but it, the, the the end result is uh, is is really good, um, or hopefully. Um, so yeah, it's it's a bit time consuming, but um, you know you don't get anywhere, you don't get a good result if you're just trying to be fast. Okay, as you can see, it's it's coming together a little bit better now. Um, highlights are. Um, I've kind of I've used a very reduced white with the neutral, and it's it gives a nice kind of um, not a stark white, but just if you just dab that around the cheeks, uh, chin, etc., just gives you the effect of some um, skin texture. 
Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in with some a little bit of this certain areas have got a slightly pink tinge to it a little bit darker um, I haven't done the eyebrows yet um, but it is coming together I'm, getting, I'm very pleased at this point um, it, I'll get to a stage where I'm going to move on to other areas of the of the portrait like the hair or the or the or the jacket or something but um, I'll just see how far I want to go with the face before that because sometimes you don't realize that you've, you've you've almost completed the face but it doesn't look like you have because you haven't done the surrounding areas so it's um it's a little bit of um pushing and pulling to uh, to get the final result well i think i've just about done with the face you can see i've put quite a fair bit of texture in there with some white i've i've dabbed in it's all there's a lot of dabbing on this because you do actually want skin texture if all this was airbrushed you would just get no texture at all it would be completely smooth it might look okay but you need a bit of a you know, if there's a crease in the forehead, you need that crease. You want to put a bit of a spot on there or a wart or whatever if there is one. Um, so I'm just going to put a dab of white in the in the in the eye just to bring that to life. Okay. There we are. I think you'll agree that that's, that's popped the eye out um, much more than it, when it was. It looked a little bit dead without that. Um, it's the highlights that really make these kind of things. It brings everything. It makes everything stand out more. I may pop in a, again a bit later on with some slightly brighter highlights on the face, but as far as I'm concerned now, that I'm kind of okay with the face. I'm going to move on to the rest of the portrait. Okay, I've moved on to the uh, onto a sort of. Um, waistcoat whatever it is um what i'm going to do is because the, i want to bring some i don't just want to cover this in blue and that's it i want to create some creases on this to give it some give it some depth so what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm doing underpainting with some white you can see i've started here i'm basically just dabbing what i want to do is create a little bit of texture on his clothes so i'm going to dab some white and i'm going to i'm going to create a lot of creases on here and then I'm going to mix some um, some navy blue with some of the neutral to make a really transparent paint and I'm going to put that over the top and the, the white highlight should show through and give the effect of a, of a creased creased waistcoat so we'll, we'll see how that works out Still got my dry brush in my mouth. Um, whenever I feel, I just want to flatten this out a little bit. That's it. So I'll just carry on doing with this, and we'll get back to you. Right, you can see I've basically dabbed some um, some creases in there. It all goes to add to the just the texture of the material. Um, what I'll do now is I'll, I'm going to go out over with some transparent navy blue, and hopefully. If it's transparent enough, the, those highlights should show through and, and, and give the, um, the illusion of a few creases in the, in the waistcoat. Okay, I've got the blue. And you can see that the white is showing through.
loading the brush up too much, but um, paint does go on really well with a nice soft brush. I've just changed my brush for this to uh, a slightly bigger one. Um, if you use the same brush all the time, you do get you tend to get your paint drying a little bit on the uh, on it, but. Um, It should sort of it's very subtle the highlight, but Right, I, can f I finished his uh, waistcoat. Um, you can see that the, the, the light did shine through. What I've also done is I've just added a little bit of white to that initial navy blue, and I've just put a few dabs up over the top of that just to, to bring out some of, the other, some of the highlights a little bit more. So, but it's, um, as you can see, um, it, it's quite a good way of, you, you, must, you must always, I think, pay attention to the underpainting. There's no point in just going in with a light blue for the lights and then a black for the darks. If you can go in with transparents, um, you're going to have a lot of detail showing through from the underneath and under layer, um, and that's what builds up um, more of a convincing image. Okay, well I've moved on to the uh, to the hair now. I hope you can see what I'm going to do. Um, I've got a another brush now. I've got a very fine brush. Um, well, actually, it's number two, but it's I mean it's I mean it's it's a different uh, it's a different style of brush. And I'm going to, just going to use, a, oh, you've got a light brown and I've mixed it with a white and just a little bit of yellow because the hair's got a little bit sort of golden looking. So I'm just going to stroke the hair in over where I've got the light, light hair. I'm not loading the brush up too much. I don't want any blobs or anything. So we're just following our reference picture. And trying to make nice continuous strokes just following what we did you still want some of the underpainting showing through to give you your highlights and we're just building up as we go along so I'll just carry on until I finish with this colour and then I'll go in with a, perhaps a darker brown and then some uh, really light brown just to bring out some of the glistening highlights. Okay I've finished with that brown, I'm just going in with some highlights now and then I'm going to perhaps colour, put a couple of strokes of the of dark brown in um, and then I may uh, fog over a little bit of brushwork um, in here where the crown of the hair is just so that I can and sort of um, get a nice fade out so I'll see how that goes. Okay, I think I've completed the hair now I've just fogged over a little bit of dark uh, where the parting is um, just to fade out the shadow really. Um, at the end, right at the end I'm going to touch it with some highlights but um, I've dusted a little bit, I mixed a bit of magenta and orange and just fogged it over around here just to give them a bit more of a tanned um, a tanned appearance. Um, I am going to do something with the um, with the lips a little bit more, and I'm also I think I'm just going to fog in some white here and here, and just add a little bit of blue because I just want to. Um, it just looks a bit dull at the moment in the background, and I just want to break it up slightly before I detail the the telescopic site here and um, and tidy up. So um, I'm very pleased with it so far. Okay, I've just, all I've got to do now really is, um, is finish the scope off because that's got a little bit of overspray over it so I'm just going to bring that back out from the background. There are a couple of little glints that need to come on the scope just to show that some light on it. Um, I just want to slightly adjust the mouth, it's, it's, it's just a little bit off uh, and then I might re-establish a couple of the highlights I think on the, on the nose right in the middle of those um, if you just put a little bit on a paintbrush and then just put it um, 
in the middle of those highlights there it'll, it'll just make the whole thing stand out a little bit more and that might be it I may sometimes what I do is on the on the edges of some of these where I it's not on the actual reference image but I like to pick out a little bit of a, a light um, edge to it just so that it, it makes it stand out for the background even more so I'll, I'll, I'll have a look at that okay well I'm gonna call it a day on this now I think I could play around for forever um, I'm very pleased with the results um, so basically I've, I, I, I've dusted over a little bit of um, orange and uh, magenta over the cheek area um, and a little bit on the lips um, put a couple of highlights in the hair I did what I said I've kind of I've put a bit of a highlight around the around the edge just to punch the whole thing out from the background um, and I've dusted on some blue just in the background here just to just to break it up from the uh, the black of the wallet and um, yeah I'm very pleased with the results anyway so um, so yeah basically this was done with um, it was 100% Angelus on this well I'm going to call it a day now I could play around with this forever I think um, I'm very pleased with the results I've added some um, highlights to the hair like I said I've, I've done just a couple of white outlines uh, just to just to bring it forward from the background um, just did a little bit of blue on the background just to break it up from the original black of the wallet um, giving it a little bit of a uh, here and there I've just did on some uh, dark brown uh, a little bit of um, magenta and orange mix just to ro rosy the cheeks up a little bit and you know and, and the lips but apart from that I can't really go into too much detail about you know the skin tones and everything I, I just do it um, as I feel necessary I, I can't really it's not a I don't write these things down I just I just do it you know and I'm, um, so yeah I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with the results um, so this was all this was 100% Angelus there is one thing I've got to do before this is considered you know complete and that is um, that's varnish it um, it's very sturdy without varnish but why wouldn't you varnish it you just want that extra protection you know so um, I, I generally tend to use um, the Angelus satin finisher which I spray on with an airbrush I usually put two or three coats on just light coats um, one of the reasons for that is um, depending on whether you've used the paint straight with a brush with a medium um, or airbrushed or brushed you can get a, um, some areas can be shiny because you um, you either did have a medium in or you didn't so, so some areas may be matte some might may be a bit shinier this is an example here bottom of the scope here you can see is shiny outside the edge of the cheek is shiny as well that that was a that was a single brush stroke there um, this I think had uh, some medium in it so to even all of this out and give it a, uh, a completely even sheen uh, that's why we put the varnish on as well it's protection and it's just to finish the the look of the artwork off so this is the wallet with the um, the varnish applied now about two or three coats nothing nothing too heavy you can see you know you still want to be, still be able to see the grain of the leather um, then you'll know it's not too thick um, the thinner you put it on as well it won't be tacky you don't want it to go, it to go on rubbery um, and as you can see it's it's evened the sheen out as well so it's it's made everything uh, it's poured everything together and um, it's also you know brought the colors out as well so yeah I'm very pleased with this